The news at 530 starts right now. Good evening. First at 530, minding his own business while driving down the freeway, a man narrowly escapes death. Yeah, a bullet was fired into his windshield. Now San Antonio police are searching for that shooter. Our Alyssa Cole is live from the southeast side with what investigators know so far. Alyssa. Yes, Tim, Courtney, well, I'm here near I-37 and East South Cross where police believe a suspect shot at that record truck from the freeway. It all happened at 1130 this morning. Now, the driver was on his way to help someone else when the bullet hit his windshield. The glass cut the driver. He got off the freeway and pulled into a Sonic to call for help. Paramedics arrived and of course they treated him there at the restaurant. He did not go to the hospital, but police say they don't know who the shooter is or where the bullet came from. But police have said once the suspect is located, they will be charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This is an ongoing investigation. And I just want to note here that this area in Southeast San Antonio here at I-37, there's a shopping center way a very busy area we got a chance to speak to some people off camera and they say they're shocked that something like this happened Alyssa Cole case at 12 news a scary situation thank you Alyssa turning to today's other top story San Antonio police say a man was apparently upset with his neighbor having a party so he pulled out a shotgun and opened fire that incident happened at a home in the 300 block of Noria Street off South Navidad Street over on the south side around 10 30 last night police say the people living at that home told them their neighbors started arguing, then fired two shots in the air while standing in the middle of the street. Then he ran into his house and barricaded himself inside. Now, according to officers, a 52 year old woman was apparently injured by one of the shotgun blasts. SAPD SWAT team was called out, but the 30 year old suspect refused to come out or talk to officers. We're told police are still investigating. SAPD says an accused 16 year old vehicle burglar is facing the consequences of a lot of bad decisions including trying to allegedly outrun police. Investigators say people living in the 1600 block of Parnell Avenue close to Salazar Samora called police around 3 this morning saying they saw a suspicious car and the person driving it was breaking into vehicles. Officers spotted that car and tried to pull him over. Police say gas speeding away from them. With help from their helicopter, police managed to stop the teen. They say the getaway car was stolen and so were several items found inside. Investigators believe the items were taken by the 16 year old suspect during the vehicle break ins. He was arrested and charged. Happening right now. San Antonio police officer is able to walk away unscathed after the driver of a pickup truck slammed into the back of his patrol vehicle. That officer was working alongside other police to block off a lane of I-10 at West to investigate that accident that had just happened. A sergeant at the scene says that's when the pickup hit the officer's vehicle. The driver of the truck was taken to the hospital with what, was what were described as minor injuries. We're told the driver is currently under investigation for DWI. The people involved in the original crash were not injured and were able to get off the highway safely. Happening right now, a family is holding on to hope and each other as they wait for searchers as they are searching for a man who vanished while on a camping trip at Canyon Lake. Take a look at your screen. Comal County Sheriff's deputies say this man, Amar Ali, a student at the University of Houston, was last seen this past Friday around 9 p.m. The two friends he was camping with say, Ali told him he was going on a walk and would be right back. When he didn't return, the friend reportedly went looking for him and ended up finding his cell phone, AirPods, and a few items of clothing by the lakeshore. Law enforcement did conduct a search operation all day yesterday, including with canines and a boat search, but they have not found that missing man. Anyone with information asked to call that number on your screen, 830-620-3400. Back to that story making headlines. The body of a missing Texas seven year old girl has been found and authorities say a contracted FedEx driver who delivered a package to the girl's home has confessed to killing her. ABC's Deirdre Bolton tells us just how close that little girl was to her home when the suspect snatched her and just how quickly she was likely killed. 
Two days after police say seven-year-old Athena Strand was kidnapped from her home near Dallas-Fort Worth, her body was found. Hundreds of volunteers had been searching around the clock for the girl. We're just sad that it didn't end the way that we would hope that it would end. Police say 31-year-old Tanner Lynn Horner was working as a contract FedEx driver and delivered a package to Strand's family home on Wednesday before grabbing the young girl about 200 yards from her house. He is now charged with capital murder and aggravated kidnapping. We do have a confession. A neighbor notified police that a FedEx truck had been in the area at the same time little Athena was last seen. Investigators worked with FedEx to track down the suspect. Make your children aware. You need to educate them to stay away from strangers. Authorities believe that based on digital evidence and interviews, Strand died within an hour of being abducted. Anytime there's a child that dies, it just hits you in your heart. FedEx reacted to the murder saying, words cannot express our shock and sorrow surrounding this tragic event and we continue to cooperate fully with the investigating authorities. So far, no motive for the crime has been revealed. Police say Horner was not related to the family and he did not know them. He had no criminal record. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, thousands of runners tested their limits by running 13 or 26 miles for the annual rock and roll marathon. Yes, yeah, some have trained for months. Others just wanted to see if they could finish. Kudos to both of them. Camelia Juarez joins with, met with both runners in both categories. The drizzly rain was a nuisance, but it didn't slow down runners. It just made it to be very slippery, and so we had to be careful with that. Thousands laced up their running shoes to run through the Alamo City. Some people didn't train, but they're proud to say they completed the race. Um, I've always challenged myself, especially being in the Navy. You know, it's one of those things where you just uh, active lifestyle and dedicate yourself and you appreciate good challenges. The female first place marathon winner, Janessa Dunn, was happy to run in her hometown. She finished with a time of two hours and 56 minutes. She's been running since she was nine, trying to improve with every race and putting her wins towards a cause she believes in. This year I'm running for an organization called Nia Zoe. It's an anti-sex trafficking rescue um, in Athens, Greece, and so all of my prize money I'm committing to give to them. So yeah, that's that's a big motivator. Although some runners didn't train, this race is important because the winners of this race will qualify for the Boston Marathon. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Still to come, a new mom celebrating the birth of her child gets a lucky break just a few hours later. The story of her big win right after this. Well, the woman in North Carolina can truly be called a lucky lady after having a day she'll never forget. She gave birth and won the lottery on the same exact day. Brenda Gomez Hernandez delivered her baby last month on November 9th. Just hours later, she won $100,000 in the Powerball lottery drawing. Hernandez said her new baby brought her luck since she uses her children's birthdays to pick her numbers. She said when she found out she won, she was so happy she burst into tears. After taxes, she'll take home about $65,000, which she says will be used to pay off her house. Congratulations to her. What a day indeed. Absolutely. All right, back here at home, taking a look outside with live cam kind of hard to see. We had some drizzle out there this morning. It's been relatively cloudy and cool across South Central Texas today. And those temperatures and the dew point temperature right up against each other, which means we're already seeing some of that fog and mist develop. Let's take a look at those visibilities across the San Antonio area down to a quarter of a mile officially at the airport. So take it easy if you're stepping out for any Sunday evening plans. Still chilly temperatures in the 50s and that fog and pockets of drizzle just going to continue to develop tonight and especially by tomorrow morning. We'll tell you what to expect for the upcoming work week after the break. Taking a look at that shot going into the break, looks like we've been transported to San Francisco out there. No, it's so foggy and nasty out there. Right? Yep, the humidity is making its grand return, and unfortunately, that muggy feel is going to stick with us throughout the vast majority of the upcoming work week, which means more morning fog and drizzle is expected, not just tomorrow, but really over the next several mornings. So because winds have been able to shift in from the southeast today, again, that opened the door for more of that Gulf 
moisture to work its way back into our area. So because of that, we're just a little bit more saturated out there, which means the fog that we already do have in place right now that likely will continue to develop across the majority of South Central Texas tonight and especially by the Monday morning drive as well as some areas of drizzle out there tomorrow morning as well. And something else you will notice heading into the upcoming work week, warmer temperatures. We're talking morning lows in the 60s, followed by highs in the mid to upper 70s. So a lot warmer than the 50s that we are finding out there right now. Now you can see when we look at our dew points, they're also in the 50s. So because the dew point temperature and the air temperature are right next to each other, that's why we are already seeing this fog and mist develop across a good portion of the area. Two mile visibility up in Kerrville in the hill country, just over a mile in Hondo. Again, here officially in San Antonio over at the airport. Visibility this 5 p.m. hour down to just a quarter of a mile out there. 54 degrees officially over at the airport this hour as well. Now likely because of the cloud cover on hand, as well as the fog already developing, temperatures are not going to budge a whole lot as you're stepping out for any of those evening plans. Notice as we take a look at future cast here in terms of your visibility, this is already by 10 p.m. tonight. We're seeing more of that fog develop and that's going to continue to be a more widespread theme by the time we're stepping out for the Monday morning drive. So as you're planning out your day tomorrow, go ahead and plan on giving yourself some extra time to get to where you need to be for the Monday morning commute. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to take the rain gear with you because again, it could be a little damp in spots with some pockets of drizzle developing. Also be careful out there on the roadways. And yet again, with all of that moisture in place, we're expected to copy and paste those conditions, not just into Tuesday morning, but Wednesday and Thursday mornings as well. Temperature wise, it's possible we warm a few degrees from where we are now compared to where we wake up tomorrow morning. Upper 50s here in the San Antonio area to kickstart the day. A few low 60s possible, especially south of San Antonio. The cloud cover sticks with us, but I do think into the afternoon hours, maybe not for everybody, but in spots we could find some of that cloud cover slightly break up just a little bit, leading way to some partial peaks of sunshine. If we can find that temperatures climbing into the low 70s, we've got a forecast high around 72 here in town for tomorrow afternoon. So we'll keep eyes on it, but overall cloud cover expected to stick with us for the most part over the next several days. And this is one of the reasons why you can see the humidity really isn't going anywhere throughout the majority of the upcoming work week. Here are those warmer temperatures that we were talking about. Remember, we're in the 50s right now, so it's chilly out there. But as we advance on throughout the week, those temperatures will warm not just in the mornings, but into the afternoons. It's going to be pretty muggy and sticky out there, waking up to the 60s, even close to 70, especially by Wednesday and Thursday morning. Again, more rounds of morning fog and drizzle expected those temperatures in the afternoons much warmer than our average high for this time of year in the upper 70s even close to 80 and then what we'll monitor is our next front that looks to move into the area Thursday and then we'll see those winds shift in from the north and as we do that it's possible that we see temperatures cool down just a little bit Friday and into Saturday and that's also and we'll monitor for our next boundary to move in. So a lot of moving pieces here. We'll continue to keep eyes on that over the next several days, guys. Mia's going to be very busy this week. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. All right, Larry, UTSA knows where they will be bowling. Yes, they are going to Orlando to play in the Cure Bowl, where they will take on Troy. So this is a Sun Belt matchup versus Conference USA. And the Texas Longhorns are coming right here to San Antonio to play in the Alamo Bowl. Coming up. USA football is going bowling for the third straight season, a fourth time overall, when they face Troy in the Cure Bowl in Orlando on December the 16th. And for the first time this season, UTSA breaks into the college football playoff rankings at number 25, while Troy is 24. Plus, UTSA moved up to number 22 in both the AP and coaches poll. This will be the second bowl game of the bowl season and the only one that will feature two conference champs going head to head. Works, they just, you know, uh, the last two have been in the state of Texas, and I know our kids wanted to get to a destination place, and uh, that's big for them. And winning the first bowl game in the history of our school is a big deal for them. 
and we drew a great opponent. Tons of respect for Troy could make the point that they're the best G5 team uh, with their schedule and strength of schedule and their winning streak. And we're excited. Uh, can't wait. Here's the matchup, a top 25 bowl game between UTSA and Troy on Friday, December 16th at 2 p.m. from Exploria Stadium in Orlando. Exploria is a soccer-specific stadium in downtown Orlando. Number 20, Texas, will face number 12, Washington, in the Valero Alamo Bowl on December the 29th. The matchup is the seventh time in the last nine years the Alamo Bowl has featured two top 20 teams. Texas finished the regular season 8-4 and four overall, 6-3 and three in the Big 12. Washington is 10-2 and two and 7-2 and two in the Pac-12. The Alamo Bowl is hoping to see Texas fans travel to San Antonio in droves. They're right up the road. They uh, missed out on the bowl game last year, so I think that uh, you know bodes well for some pent-up demand from that perspective and a chance for uh, the first bowl trip under Coach Sark. Oh, we're very fortunate. I think it speaks volumes. One, we got the best title sponsor in the business in Valero. We've got a tremendous destination city, and you got two great conferences that like to play some exciting brands of football. So this is exciting, and uh, we've got some exciting players coming in as well. 30th annual Valero Alamo Bowl will feature Texas and Washington on Thursday, December 29th, 8 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. Texas is the designated away team and will have your other bowl matchups, including where Baylor and Tech are going tonight on instant replay. The college football playoff semifinals are all set. Number three, TCU will take on at number two, Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl on Saturday, December 31st at 3 p.m. And the Peach Bowl will see number four, Ohio State play number one, Georgia on the same day at 7 p.m. The two winners will play for the national championship on January 9th, 2020. The UIW Cardinal, Cardinals are still alive in the FCS playoffs after yesterday's 41-38 victory against Furman. Quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. completed 33 passes for 394 yards and five touchdowns while also running for 139 yards. And he also set an FCS record for most touchdowns in a single season with 62. His last TD pass to Cole Wilson was the game winner in a crazy game that saw five lead changes. Scott, well, he doesn't care about the record right now. He just wants to keep playing. I've said it all year, you know, the accolades, that's something that I'm going to appreciate after the season's over right now. It's about this team. It's about the fact that, you know, as a, as a unit, we secure another week. You know, these guys didn't quit. They scratched and clawed through the entire, the entire game. And, uh, you know, uh, when, the, when the season's over, you know, we'll, we'll look back and say, you know, how remarkable that was. But for right now, I'm just proud of this group. Number seven, UIW advances a play at number two, Sacramento State, next Friday night at 9.30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson returned from his 11-game suspension to face his old team, the Houston Texans, at NRG Stadium. Watson was rusty, going 12 for 22 for 131 yards passing and one interception. He had seven carries for 21 yards. Now, on the flip side, Texans starting QB Kyle Allen had a rough day. He lost one fumble that resulted in a Browns four-yard touchdown return, and he also threw two interceptions, one return for a pick six. Browns beat the Texans by a final of 27 to 14. It's tough, you know, walking into the stadium, you know, on the opposite side of the of the stadium and locker room, it, it was different because I know exactly how those guys, you know, get ready for games and how they do the pregame, the talk and everything. So it was a lot of emotion. Philadelphia Eagles beat the Tennessee Titans 35-10 today, improving to 11-1. Eagles QB Jalen Hurts passed for 380 yards with three touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown to lead the way. The Dallas Cowboys will host the Indianapolis Colts tonight at 7:20 at AT&T Stadium. Dallas is favored by 10 and a half points. We'll have highlights and post game tonight on instant replay right after the night beat. Spurs hosting the Suns in an early 3 p.m. game today at the AT&T Center. Phoenix is the best in the West while the Spurs started the day tied for last. First quarter, Devin Vassell scored the first five points of the game with a 19-foot jumper and then a 26-foot three-pointer. Trey Jones put the Spurs up 7 to nothing before the Suns finally got rolling. Devin Booker goes slam dunk, and Phoenix takes its first lead of the game, 21-19, and they would dominate the rest of the way. They led 71-41 at halftime, and the Suns had the Spurs hand the Spurs their 11th straight loss, 133-95. So the Spurs will next host the Houston Rockets Thursday night, 7:30 at AT&T Center. The reader of this year proclamation has hereby earned for herself a full scholarship. Woo! 
A very cool moment right there for Lauren Brasenio, the Baylor Libero cried tears of joy after learning she's getting a full scholarship from Baylor Volleyball. This happened a week ago today during a white elephant gift exchange at her coach's house during the NCAA selection show and her teammates were in on it. Brasenio from Cornerstone Christian High School was a walk on last season and now the sophomore has a full ride. Baylor's getting ready to face Louisville in the Sweet 16 round of the NCAA Volleyball Tournament. Congratulations to her and her family. It's the gift that keeps on giving, Larry. Yep. Love it. Thank you so much. And we will be right back. And that's all of our time for now. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here on the night beat. Have a good evening. Good night.